Hello everyone, Richard here, and welcome to episode 7 in my Killing Floor 2 perk guide. Today we're going to be looking at another incredibly strong perk, the Sharpshooter. Sharpshooters, often abbreviated to SS or Sharps, are a very powerful, high value target killer with a mildly steep learning curve. They rely on scoring consistent headshots to bring down their foes and utilize weapons that favor precision over volume of fire. At first, the Sharpshooter can be a bit frustrating especially as you progress in difficulty, as enemies' heads, especially the more nimbler ones, will become much more elusive. If you find yourself getting flustered or missing frequently, remember that slow is steady, steady is smooth, and smooth is fast. The passive bonuses for the sharpshooter are pretty straightforward. At level 25, you will get 25% increased headshot damage, 25% reduced recoil, and 50% faster weapon swap speed. Compared to many other perks, the bonuses are minimal, however are only a small part of the picture as sharps gain a considerable amount of advantages from their skill tree. In addition, sharpshooters also have access to arguably the best utility grenade in the whole game, the cryo or freeze grenade. Not only will it easily freeze a group of trash enemies and buy time for an escape, but also big zeds instantly with a single grenade assuming they are not blocking or raging in the case of flesh pounds. Against the Patriarch, you are also able to freeze him in place as he begins to flee, allowing you to perform an early kill and bypass all three of his stages. The starting weapon for the Sharpshooter will be the Lever Action Rifle, which was previously mentioned in the Gunslinger video. For the Sharpshooter, it is a reasonably effective weapon, especially when paired with Stability and rack em Up, allowing you to headshot bloats and husks with a high enough bonus. It is a bit unwieldy against crawlers and stalkers that will appear on wave 2 and beyond, but otherwise works fine as an early game weapon. Remember that like all sharpshooter weapons, it does have penetration, so be sure to take full advantage and score additional collateral headshots whenever possible. The first tier 2 weapon available to the sharpshooter will be the SPX-464, a very tactical version of the lever action rifle and chambering a much more powerful 4570 round. Its greater mass allows it to deal over twice the amount of damage than its Winchester counterpart. This extra damage makes it very good at quickly bringing down several medium sets like Sirens or Husks and lets it serve as a good backup weapon for the higher tier options. Despite its nerf since it was added, the SPX is still a very powerful rifle and worth considering, especially later on as a secondary. The next tier 2 weapon, the Crossbow, is a bit more situational and is largely used in conjunction with Ballistic Shock to stun large Zeds in preparation for a solo or team takedown. In solo games, they do function well, with more nimble weapons as a way to bring down Scrakes and Flush Pounds. Crossbows are less popular on higher difficulties due to their relatively low damage, heavy weight, and slow reload. However, they do have their uses in parallel with the FAL and M14 in the right hands. The first and only tier 3 weapon for the sharpshooter, the M14, is arguably the perk's most well-rounded weapon, with relatively large magazines, a clear optic, decent damage with high stun power to boot. While it may lack the absolute knockdown power of a railgun or M99, its ability to handle trash, medium and large zeds, especially with ballistic shock, makes it an easy pick. Flexibility is a rarity for the sharpshooter, due to the perk's single-minded nature. It also allows you to more frequently score headshots, which means you will generate Z time more often thanks to the sharpshooter's level 25 skill. While not the most powerful single-shot weapon in-game anymore, the railgun is still a formidable weapon for sharpshooters, especially when playing on solo or with only a few other players. It offers two firing modes, regular and a special lock-on that will target various hit zones on Zeds. However, this lock-on only deals half the damage of the regular shot, making it less desirable against big Zeds. Lock-on times will vary depending on Zed type, with most taking 0.35 seconds, big Zeds taking 0.6 seconds, and bosses taking 1.1 seconds. At tier 5, the railgun only deals 15% less damage with a much more generous ammo pool compared to the M99. This makes it a great alternative when strapped for cash, or wishing to take a more flexible secondary weapon. The newest addition to the sharpshooter family, the FN-FAL, is another very flexible option in the same vein as the M14. 
While it does deal slightly less damage and stun power, its larger ammo pool and full auto capability make it an extremely useful weapon against all enemy types. With Ballistic Shock, it is capable of stunning Scrakes with roughly 6 shots to the head and Flesh Pounds with around 10. Despite the FAL taking roughly 50% more shots than the M14 to successfully stun a large Zed, its high automatic fire rate more than compensates for this. The final sharpshooter specific weapon, the M99 Anti-Material Rifle, is a system designed to defeat lightly armored vehicles as opposed to flesh and blood. Naturally, it deals very high damage and under the right circumstances and with the right skills, can even headshot a flesh pound with a single shot. However, it does weigh 12 kilograms, meaning that your options for a secondary weapon are few and far between. Ammunition costs are also very high, roughly 50 dosh per round, or more than that of a grenade. That being said, the ability to penetrate several medium zeds and instantly snuff the life out of a big zed makes it a tempting choice if you have a team that can cover your 6. For cross perk weapons, the sharpshooter has access to both the 1858 and 500 magnums, and both of which serve well as a backup weapon or as a filler for a build. The 1858s are very inexpensive and offer some additional stopping power over the 9mm which can help against medium zeds and gore fasts. The 500 on the other hand possesses much higher damage and penetration at the cost of increased weight, a smaller magazine capacity, and being very expensive. Either one is a worthwhile choice as a backup, but I generally favor the 500 magnum in my loadouts. Moving on to loadouts, the first of two, and by far the most flexible, is the Sharp Mando, sporting any dual combination of the FAL, M14, and SPX. My personal favorite being the M14 and FAL, as the FAL's fair ammo pool allows you to remedy the major weakness of the M14, its small ammo pool. For skills, I would recommend running Marksman, Stability or Ballistic Shock, Rack'em Up, Always Prepared, and Ranger. The choice between Stability and Ballistic Shock will come down to how you and your team function. Stability's increased reload speed and damage make takedowns happen much quicker, but the increased stun power of Ballistic Shock means you can stun like big zeds and open up the possibility for a team takedown. I opt for always prepared over Deadeye because the additional ammo helps when caught in a pinch or when you are forced to clutch a round, but more importantly gives you an additional freeze grenade, granting you either an additional get out of jail free card or another easy big zed takedown. Marksman benefits fire rate and mobility, but sharply increases the DPS of the FAL in full auto fire something that is hard to pass up if you can handle the recoil. Our next build will be a big game hunter of sorts, using either an M99 or an upgraded railgun with a 500 magnum as a secondary. If you desire a more flexible secondary option, the railgun can be paired with the SPX as well, giving you a more responsive and precise weapon at range thanks to its red dot sight. The skills for the big game hunter are a bit more flexible and will largely depend on what difficulty you're playing on how many players are in the game, and personal preference. You will take either Marksman or Sniper, Stability, Rack'em Up or Tactical Reload, Deadeye, and Ranger. While Sniper may seem more logical for your first skill, remember that you will still be moving and displacing, and that you do have a secondary weapon that benefits from the increased rate of fire. Even if you consistently use the Railgun or M99, the addition of Rack'em Up will add 10% additional damage to the first headshot, and it can be stacked up prior to a takedown using the 9mm and then quickly switching it to your primary. Since the assassin skill is mostly broken, Ranger is still the preferred choice and will lead to flesh pounds being stunned in Zed time if you land successful headshots. Unlike some of the other perks we reviewed, the sharpshooter does have a lot of wiggle room for playing with skills and builds and almost every skill is considered viable in one build or another. To that end, I advise people to experiment with builds and find out what works best while still playing true to the perk's strengths. You don't have to be the best marksman in Killing Floor 2 to be an effective sharpshooter. Pacing your shots and not getting flustered or upset will help you aim better and prevent you from wasting ammunition. Try getting into the habit of getting headshot kills only. This will help you greatly as you progress through the difficulties as the Zeds become much more unpredictable and speedy. Sharpshooters synergize very well with other high precision perks, or at least ones that don't cause too much chaos. 
Those would include the Commando and SWAT for their trash cleaning potential, and the Gunslinger for their flexibility. Firebugs and Demolitionists are the hardest to get along with, as flames and explosions will cause Zeds to move unpredictably and block your line of sight. Your relationship with your team should be symbiotic. Deal with threats at long range, especially the more durable ones, and they should be responsible for dealing with the more agile fodder, like crawlers and slashers. This is in part why the sharp can be a very frustrating perk to play, as you may never have a clean shot on a big Zed due to being constantly harassed by trash Zeds permeating your team's defenses. Overall though, sharpshooters can be, and often are, critical components to a team that value control over chaos. Their ability to reliably generate Zed time, dispatch large Zeds, and eliminate all threats from range make them a welcome choice in any team composition. In addition, their very useful grenades allow them to either freeze big Zeds in place, or at the very least, buy time for an escape. Thank you very much for watching, join us next time when we take a look at the final perk in the Trinity of Control, the Commando. Let me know how you like to play Sharpshooter, as well as your favorite loadout in the comments section below. Also feel free to subscribe so you never miss a guide, and check out my Patreon page if you wish to support me. Thank you again for joining in, but until next time, happy hunting.